Hi class, welcome to our lesson in general physics 1. We are discussing uh, lesson 6, uh, final lesson in our uh, general physics. Today we are basically just discussing other types of motion that we haven't talked about. Um, this will be quite, I hope, an easy lesson because we've discussed a lot of this when we were talking about kinematics of equation, which is also related to motion. So let's head and talk about the goals of this lesson as for you guys for to be, uh, be able to calculate the moment of inertia about a given axis of a single object and multiple objects in the systems. Also calculate the magnitude and direction of tor torque using the definition of torque as a cross product. Also be able to describe the rotational quantities using vectors and lastly determine whether a system is in a static or an equilibrium not. So let's head on first discussing uh, rotation kinematics. So what is rotation kinematics? Uh, it's quite simply, it's basically the movement of an object as it turns about an axis. One of the easiest to visualize this is, for example, a clock. You know that uh, the hands of the clock are moving rotationally. So the axis is basically talking about the point where it turns. So in this case, the middle portion is where the hand of the clock turns, the axis is in the middle. The same thing for these hands as they move cl uh, clockwise, this is basically the axis. Another thing, uh, as an example of this, is an electric fan. If you guys have an electric fan at home, you know the electric fans rotate. Another example is CD turning for those who uh, buy K-pop albums or whatever albums you like to listen to. I know a lot today we just listen through phone uh, and through YouTube. Um, I forgot the app for the song Spotify. There you go. You, you listen to that. But if you guys still have albums, you usually play them in CD players and the CD rotates. So that is basically rotational motion. So it's uh, uh, the object moving along or turning around its, uh, turning about its axis. So how is it related to kinematics? So, so basically we can measure uh, the rotation and the displacement, the velocity, and even the acceleration on basically how fast the object turns. So what we do to measure those is we use what we call angular quantities. So we, uh, angular quantities is used to describe these rotations or these motions. When we talk about this angle theta right here, we have done a lot. Of, uh, we've done, uh, we have used this symbol right here. This is a symbol theta, and when we use uh, the symbol theta, we usually um, use it to denote angle. And in this case, what we're talking about is the angular position. So angular position is basically we use. Um, this circle we're in, this is 0, this is 90, this is 180, something like that. So basically, um, we use theta the same way that we have been using it. It's just in this case, we're going to use it as an angular position. But it's a very exact same thing. We can use it in degrees. Only difference when we use it in kinematics equation, or in this case, rotation kinematics, is that sometimes there could be a final and initial angular positions. So for example, in this case, you can have the initial position of this red at 12. You can think of it that way. And then you can imagine the <coughs> next position in here, uh, or at six, so that's 180 degrees, so that's 90, and that's about uh, 0, 90, 180, and 270, so you have 90 and 270, so 90 degrees is your initial, and then 270 is your final degree. And you can just subtract uh, that difference in the initial to get the difference in the angular position. And it's very the same, uh, it's basically the same thing that we've been used, only uh, this time we are using it in angle. Also, another thing about rotation in kinematics, instead of degrees, we can also use it in radians and revolutions. So what are the differences between degrees, radians, and revolutions? The uh, first thing that I want you guys to note about is they're all talking about angular position. So they're basically talking about uh, the angle of measurement 
or the position of the rotation. Okay, so a one revolution is equal to 360 degrees. So if you started here as your uh, zero degree Celsius, I'm not Celsius, sorry, Celsius is temperature. So it's zero degree, so just follow the point right here, that's your zero degrees, and then you move 90, you move 180, you move 270, and when you go back to zero, that's full 360 degrees, that one whole turning is called one revolution. And we all we can also think about this as the rotation of the Earth around the Sun. So you can imagine this center right here is the Sun and the edge is the Earth. So one revolution of the Earth is equals to one year because it's it's the time where in the Earth returns to the same position it started at the beginning of the year. So you can imagine the Earth is started here at Gen uh, here at uh, let's say January one at twelve a.m. And then at let's say 2020, and then at 2021, it ended up the same position, and that is whole 360 degrees. So you can think of it that way. So basically, one revolution is one whole turning, it's basically 360 degrees. And in radians, what we call that is basically 2 pi. Uh, radians is again another measurement of angle, but instead of degrees, we use radians. 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi radians or 2 pi rad. We know the value of pi, that's basically 3.4216 uh, and other more numbers. And just measure, um, and you can just uh, multiply that uh, to the to pi and you will get 6.28 uh, radians. So three, uh, one revolution is equal to 360 degrees or 2 pi rad or to pi radians or 6.28 radians. So just remember this measurement. So when you are converting from degrees, so for example, if they give you degrees and in the problem you want you to get radians, then you can easily convert the answer. The linear distance can actually, uh, you can get the linear distance uh, from the arc. So the arc is this right here. So this is the arc. Okay, um, so basically, can think of it as the edge of the of the angular path, or the edge where in the path is moving. So, for example, if I have here, uh, this is you can imagine this again at zero degrees. Maybe let's use my pen so it's kind of clear what is happening. So you can imagine this as zero degrees, and then if I move here at twelve. So you can think of that as 90 degrees. And immediately we know that the angle is what? 90 degrees. That is because my initial, that is because my final angle minus my initial angle, I started with zero degrees and I ended up with 90 degrees. So that gives me 90 degrees. But I can also turn this angular position this angular distance, you can also think of this as an angular distance as a linear distance. So what that means is I want this part right here and you kind of like you want to stretch it out and make it straight. So if I take this position right here, this is called an arc. No, this is an arc and then I took this arrow and then I made it as a straight uh, line, then that becomes a linear distance. So what I want to do is I want to measure how much distance I need in this arc. So what we can do to solve that is basically this equation. So distance is equals to uh, the angle multiplied by r. r in this case is your radius. So in order to measure or to convert angle distance what you want to do is basically take your angle and multiply it by the radius so d is equals to angle radius okay so the radius is basically this part right here so from the center basically the axis until here that is your radius so by identifying this radius you can measure uh, this arc in terms of linear distance. I hope that is clear. 
Next, we have what we call angular velocity, which is the rate of the angular displacement. Angular displacement is basically the angular position. So you're traveling from here. Let's go back here from 0 to 90. So angular velocity is basically asking how fast you move from 3 to 12, something like that, or basically from 0 angle to 90 degree angle. And we have an equation to solve how fast we can we travel and that is this equation right here this uh, symbol right here is another greek symbol that we call omega so this is an omega it is equals to or instead of keeping uh, uh calling it an omega we just call it an angular velocity so this angular velocity is equals to the difference or or delta angular position or the difference in your angle so that's basically this one uh, final angle minus the initial angle divided by the time so how fast or how long it take for you to move from the initial angle to the final angle and we usually use uh, the units rad per second rad is radians okay do not get confused with rads and radius this is a radius not rad this is different. Radius is basically the half the diameter from the point of the circle to the edge. Okay, red is what we're talking about in radians. So you want your units of angle in radians. Next, uh, if we have angular velocity, we can have linear velocity. Similar to this, so we derive this linear distance from angular position we can get a linear velocity so meaning uh, we change this arc to a straight line meaning we converted the length of arc traveled into a straight line and we have a angular velocity where in the time it took for uh, this uh, for the object to travel or to move from the initial angle to final angle we can change or we can derive a linear velocity from the angular velocity. So this is our equation for the angular velocity. Right, so that is the equation for the angular velocity. We have delta angle over divided by delta time. We can actually change this to delta D because we know that delta angle is equals to uh, or delta D is equals to angle multiplied by radians. Therefore, we know that the angle is equals to distance divided by the radius. So that means is this delta D right here is equals to delta angle is equals to delta D. R is not delta because it's constant. You know? uh, in this scenario, angle is constant. It depends on the length of the radius. So this delta angle right here is equals to delta D over R. And what you notice is distance over time. So what that basically means is that distance over time is basically velocity. So velocity over radius is equals to the angular velocity. So this is also equal to if the, if the velocity and the radius. What that means is that we can get uh, the linear velocity. Remember, linear velocity, how far it took or how long it takes to travel to a distance in a straight line. So this is your linear velocity is equals to the angular velocity multiplied by the radius. Again, this is not in red, this is radius. So that's how the that's the relationship between linear velocity and angular displacement, and this is the relationship between the linear distance and the angular displacement. Next, something that you're already familiar with. Now let's look at acceleration. Acceleration is basically the difference between the initial and the final uh, angular velocity divided by time, because that's how we measure acceleration acceleration is when we have initial velocity and we minus that from the final velocity divided by time but in this case since we're talking about angular we're talking about in a rotational 
uh, movement, what we want to take is instead of the linear velocity, we want to take the angular velocity. So we have angular velocity final minus the initial angular velocity divided by the time it took for this um, for this angular velocity to change. And we use alpha. So this is an alpha. It's not just a uh, simple letter A. This is alpha uh, that we use to denote angular acceleration. And similarly, we can derive a linear acceleration relationship from the angular acceleration. And that relationship, again, is basically multiplying the linear, the angular acceleration to the radius. So you can see this letter A, this denotes uh, acceleration in linear acceleration is equals to the angular acceleration multiplied by r. So as you notice, uh, the relationship basically between the angle and the linear is basically the radius. So if you have the angular position or angular displacement, multiplying that angular displacement to the radius will give you the linear distance or linear displacement. If they give you the angular velocity, multiply that angular velocity to r or to the radius and it will give you the linear velocity. If they give you the angular acceleration, multiply that angular acceleration to the radius will give you the linear acceleration. So I hope that it's clear. So basically we turned all the linear kinematics into rotational kinematics and this is the relationship. And, or this is how we solve for rotational kinematics. What does that mean also is we can use the linear um, kinematics that we've derived a long time ago and change them into rotational kinematics. So as you can see here, so if you have your velocity is equal to distance over time or distance is equal to velocity multiplied by time. The same thing we have, the angular velocity is basically equals to the distance or in this case angular displacement over time. And we can measure the angular displacement is equals to the angular velocity multiplied by time. We also have this equation where in order for us to get the final velocity, that is, uh, we just need the initial velocity and add the product of the acceleration and time. The same thing, if you want to get the uh, final angular velocity, you just have to get the initial angular velocity and add the, ang the product of the angular acceleration and time. So as you can see, we just basically change the velocities to angular velocities, the acceleration to angular acceleration, and the displacement into angles, because the angles and that's how you get the displacement. So you, in the end, you can use this kinematics of rotational, or uh, this kinematics of equation to also get the rotational motion of an object. Okay, so I hope that is clear. So this is basically what rotational motion is. Uh, we can derive everything using the same equation that we've been using. Now let's put it into practice. Let's have our example right here. So BJS album CD has a playing time of 74 minutes. So meaning in order for the whole album to finish is it uh, it takes 74 minutes for from the start of the song to the end of the song. When the music starts, the CD is rotating at 480 RPM. RPM means revolutions per minute. Remember revolutions 360? So meaning 480 revolutions, so it means there's, it rotated 480 times, so it rotated 480 times in a span of one minute. So that's what basically RPM is. At the end, uh, so it starts at 480, and then at the end, it is basically rotating at 210 RPM, so it's lower. Determine A, the angular acceleration of the CD in radians per square meter or per square per second squared, and B, the angle in radians the CD has turned true. So, okay, so in B, what it's asking is how many angles basically it turned true in radians. So let's try this. First, let's write our given. 
So the time it took for the CD to finish rotating is 74 minutes. So we're giving it a time of 74 minutes. And then the initial rotation. So RPM, as you can see, our rotation per minute, it's basically angle over time. So angle over time, as we know, is angular is angular velocity. So this 480 RPM here is angular velocity. And at the start of the CD, the initial angular velocity is equals to 480 RPM. And at the end, so basically that's the final angular velocity, it is basically 210 RPM. So what is being asked of us? Okay, it wants us to find the angular acceleration. So the alpha. It finds it wants us to find this is not letter D, okay? Do not get confused. This is an alpha. There you go. So this is uh, find the accelerator, angular acceleration in terms of radians per second squared. So this is in terms of radians. This is in terms of revolution. So here you have to be able to convert radians to revolution. So you have to remember the conversion factor we discussed earlier. And B, you have to find the angle in terms of radians. Okay, so how much angle basically the whole, uh, the or the angle had moved. So basically the angular displacement. Okay, and then the formula that we have to use, basically the formula for angular, <coughs> uh, for angular angle or for an angular angle, the angular acceleration, we know that we have to get the final angular uh, velocity yeah, angular velocity minus the initial angular velocity divided by time. Oops, sorry. Uh, what happened? Here, there you go. Okay. Next, uh, what we have to do is what is the equation for angle in rods? We're going to derive that later. But for now, let's solve for the angular uh, the, uh, angular acceleration. Sorry, I kind of still get confused by this. So yeah, we're talking about angular acceleration. Okay, solution. So in order for us to get the angular acceleration, what we want to do is take, uh, so this is all what we have. We have the final angular velocity and the initial angular velocity and we have the time. So angular uh, acceleration is equals to final angular velocity minus the initial angular velocity divided by time. Plugging in the numbers, we get 210 RPM minus 480 RPM divided by uh, yeah, divided by 74 minutes and we can use minutes here because uh, this is per minute so we're canceling basically the same we're not canceling we're basically using the same units of time if this is in second you have to change it you have to change this in second or you have to change this in minutes so make sure you are using the same units of time so that is basically I'm just plugging that on the computer on your calculator you would get uh, negative it's negative because it's you know it's slowed down so your acceleration should be negative so it's a deceleration that's 365 3.65 revolutions per minute squared revolutions per minute squared minute squared because this is acceleration acceleration is always in 
uh, this year second is always in the square root. Okay, so after I get this, what it wants me is to use or to change this to red per second. And we know that one revolution is equals to what? 2 pi red or this is equals to 6.28 reds, correct? This is from the discussion earlier. This is the conversion factor. Now we can solve for uh, A in terms of red. It's, let's move this. Because we know that one revolution is equals to 2 pi red or is equals to 6.28 red. Okay, so if, if our A is equals to negative 3.65, revolution per minute squared then what we have to do is to change uh, we need to change it also into seconds so what we have to do is multiply this we're in this is in revolution and this is in red And we know that one revolution, so we can cancel the revolution, is equals to 6.28 reds. We also have to multiply this in terms of second to cancel the second. So we have, we have to have minutes here and we have to have seconds here. We know that in 60 seconds, there is one minute. But in this case, we have to square it. We have to square it because our minute is in squared. So that would give us, uh, that can cancel the minute there because it's in squared. Okay, so this is basically 60 squared. 60 squared is 3, uh, 6 times 6, 36. So basically, I think 3,600. Yeah, 3,600 squared. So, but just plug in this in your calculator, it will give you negative. 6.37 times 10 raised to negative 3 rad per second squared. So this is our answer. So that's for letter A. Now let's solve for letter B. As for letter B, how much angle? Basically, uh, if this is a moving car, how far did it travel? The displacement but this time since it is rotating ang tinatanong is how much angle it moved in a kumbaga if one rotation is 36 360 degrees or that's basically 2 pi rad so in one minute it moved to 480 no it moved to 480 per minute so, so that's in the beginning. So that's basically 2 pi 5 multiplied by 480. But this is in revolution. So you have to change this to rad. But basically what it's asking is how much it traveled in uh, circular distance or in angular displacement. And in order for us to do that, we just have to use one of the kinematics equation, which is uh, the equation 2. Uh, a angular displacement or angular acceleration multiplied so instead of 2 AD you have 2 angular 2 alpha theta is equals to uh, you have your final squared minus your angular initial squared okay and you we can use this because we are given the WF, we are given the or the omega final and the omega initial, and we also are able to solve for the alpha. Okay, so that's basically F squared minus initial squared, and uh, this is uh, alpha theta. Just plugging your numbers, that would give you 
this is uh, 210 revolutions per minute so it's rpm squared minus 480 rpm squared divided by what's our <clears throat> oh not sorry this should be 2 2 a or 2 alpha okay so that's 2 and our alpha in terms of revolution per minute, we have the revolution per minute because this is all in revolutions per minute for now. So that's 3.65 revolution per minute squared. And that would give us uh, it's 25,500 revolutions. Okay, so it means that our CD has turned about 25,500 revolutions throughout the entire 74 minutes. So that's a lot of turn. So for 74 minutes, uh, in 74 minutes, it basically revolved uh, on its axis around 25,500. So but it's asking us in radians, so you have to convert this in radians. So we have 25,500 revolutions. You have to multiply that to basically one revolution is equals to 2.6 or 6.28 rad. Cancel the revolution and that would give us 1.63 times 10 raised to 5 red so that's basically one six one two three four five so that's hundred and sixty thousand radians or if you just use this find you have an answer so that's 1.60 times 5 or times 10 raised to 5 radians okay so uh we're in our next lesson we're gonna have more practice in revolutions but this is the beginning um I hope you guys understand what we are doing. It's basically the same kinematics of equation, but this time it's in rotation motion instead of a linear equation. If you guys have any question about this, do not hesitate to message me and have a good day.